world's largest economy facing challenges of a different kind, actually, as talks continue over the U.S. debt mountain. Politicians seem closer, no closer to a deal. Democrats say that spending cuts to Social Security are off the table, but Republicans insist that they won't agree to any budget plan that includes tax rises. Now, Democrats say that failing to increase a $14.3 trillion deficit ceiling would be irresponsible and disastrous. Republicans say it would be more irresponsible to keep spending at current levels than it would be to allow the U.S. to default. We want to ensure that there are real cuts in the trillions to match any increase uh, in our nation's debt ceiling. It's that simple. We believe it is as reckless uh, to not affect real change than it is to not raise the debt limit. Well, there you go. Despite all that, both sides say they're optimistic that a debt deal can be done. Want to find out what our next guest thinks. For the past decade, he's focused on U.S. analysis for capital economics last year. His predictions on how the recovery would unfold won him accolade of best forecaster from the Wall Street Journal, Paul Ashworth, in the studio with me now. Great to see you. Thanks Good for morning. coming in. Uh, so you heard the comments there. Um, mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be very difficult to get a deal, I think. Uh, it's probably going to have to be a mix of uh, both higher taxes and lower spending. Um, and we have these two competing visions, really, one from the Democrats, one from the Republicans. And I suspect we're not really going to get a deal, a long-term deal, until after the presidential election next year. I mean, you've got House Speaker John Boehner calling for trillions in federal spending cuts as a condition for increasing the debt limit. How much is that going to how much is that going to complicate talks between congressional leaders? I mean clearly though both sides are a long way apart, um, but there is a lot of room therefore in the middle to find a deal. Um, I suspect it's going to be hard to find a comprehensive mm. deal in the short term, um, but if they can get the makings at least of a short term deal to raise the debt limit. Uh, and then as we go through next year, we get past the presidential election. That would give a new president, hopefully a mandate, to uh, whichever, as you say, Democrat or Republican visions the electorate votes for. Um, then maybe we can move forward from there. So you think it'll run through to the 2012 election, but then you will still have these competing visions, won't you? You've still got Republicans wanted to, wanting to take dramatic steps to reduce spending, Democrats rejecting cuts to what Social Security and Medicare. So how then do you deliver trillions in cuts? Like, where is it? Where does it come well, I mean, from? Maybe after the election, um, we may have some shift in the balance of power. Maybe we have a Republican president. Maybe the House returns to Democrat control, although the latter is rather unlikely. Um, but either way, I think the president will be able to use his own personal mandate after that election to say, look, this is what the people have voted for. They have decided and we should give them what they want. Of course, the interesting thing right now is that the U.S. isn't facing any great pressure in the markets to reduce its spending. Well, that's true. I mean, we know that S&P put their AAA credit rating on a negative watch, and what's happened since is that the U.S. borrowing costs have gone down. Mm. Um, so there's not an urgency as there is, obviously, with Greece. Uh, the U.S. has a smaller debt. It's only 70 percent of GDP, a very large deficit. But with those low borrowing costs, the actual interest that it's paying on its debt at the moment is a pretty small sum, about 1.5 percent of GDP. So there isn't the urgency there. Um, but of course, with a deficit of 10 percent of GDP, it isn't going to be many more years before there is that urgency. Uh, so that's well, why we well, need exactly. a deal could within that, the next Could you envisage a scenario where that could change, borrowing costs could suddenly jump? I mean, it's possible. But uh, remember, the U.S. has some advantages above per particularly peripheral Eurozone countries. It's, the, it's got the dollar, which is still the world's reserve currency. Treasury markets are the deepest and most liquid in the world. And the dollar, obviously, is a freely floating currency. Um, so at the moment, um, you know, there's no danger. Um, but the risk is always that those bond market vigilantes will make a comeback. And so uh, Congress needs to stay one step ahead of those. What could be the catalyst to that? Um, possibly, for instance, if the U.S. economic data takes a turn for the worse, maybe the economy dips again. Um, possibly we could see a sharp sell-off in the dollar. Either of those things um, maybe could uh, make bond investors um, reconsider you know, whether they really should be funding these deficits at such a low borrowing cost. Paul Ashworth, Capital Economics, thanks for coming in. You're Good welcome. to talk to you.